Hello! I have another book for you, sir. This one is called The Magic School Bus Up and Down. A book about floating and sinking. Ooh, where are they? See, they're in the water. Do you think they're in a pool or in the ocean? Can you tell? Can you see these things? Let's find out. The magic school bus. Oh, oh there's the bus. Even or er, when Miss Frizzle is your teacher, anything can happen. Even on a Saturday when there is no school. Last Saturday, we were all sitting in our houses watching In Your Face. In Your Face is this really cool talk show that everyone in our class watches. Suddenly, the host of the show, Gary Paveri, announced that a monster was living in Walker Lake. A monster? We couldn't believe our ears. We turned off our sets and rushed to the lake to check it out. What do you see? So there's the class. Ooh, what's he got? What do you, where are they? What are those? Hmm. Do you think they're going to find a monster? Uh, when we got to the lake, we noticed that two things were missing. The first was Wanda. That was strange. She's usually the first person to jump into action. But now she was nowhere to be found. The second thing was the monster. Was Gary Paveri right? Was the monster really down there? We had to figure out a way to find out. Then Tim came up with an idea. I'll use my underwater video camera to catch the monster on film, he suggested. I'll call it Monster Cam. Ooh, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to do. I have one, though, that's not looking too impressed over here. Tim put his monster cam container into the water, but instead of sinking to the bottom, it floated on top of the water. That's not going to work. Then Phoebe came up with an idea. She thought the monster might be hungry, so she held a banana over the top of the lake. If I were a monster, I, uh, it would take more than a banana to get me to the surface, Ralphie told Phoebe. Phoebe had to admit that Ralphie had a point. If the monster won't come up for a banana, I'll send the banana down to the monster. She threw the banana into the lake. Splash! But just like Tim's video camera, the banana bobbed on top of the water too. Oh no! A banana floats! <laughs> That's okay. I like banana splits better. Do you like banana splits? We had to figure out some way to get to the bottom of this. If we want to see that monster, we'll have to find a way to turn those floaters into sinkers, Keisha said. Suddenly, Wanda came running onto the dock. Where have you been? We asked her. But Wanda was too excited to answer us. Did you see the monster yet? She asked. She dumped the gear out of her backpack, swim fins, face mask, and snorkel. What was Wanda up to? I'm going to dive for it, Wanda announced. Wanda always dives right into everything. You see her dive, getting all her dive gear? Phoebe didn't think Wanda's plan was such a good idea. What would Miss Frizzle say? She asked. Wanda shook her head. It's the weekend, Phoebe. No school. No, Miss Frizzle. Just then, the water in the middle of the lake started bubbling like crazy. <gasps> and the bubbles were heading straight toward the dock. Oh, my goodness, was the monster finally coming up to the top? The monster! It's coming towards us! Oh, dear. The next thing we knew, the monster was right in front of the dock. It rose out of the water uh, and took off its face mask and mouthpiece and it wasn't the monster. 
It was Miss Frizzle. Good morning, class, the Frizz said brightly. Nothing like a dip in the deep. What is she doing here? I'm afraid to find out. Are you looking for the monster too, Wanda asked. If you don't look, you'll never see. And what you don't see can be very hard to find, Mrs. Frizzle, Miss Frizzle replied. We weren't sure exactly what that meant, but we knew that with Miss Frizzle around, we were going to find out. Uh, just then, we heard a loud whirring sound. The in-your-face helicopter was overhead. Ooh. Stay out of the water! Gary Paveri's voice boomed out. For updates on the monster of Walker Lake, watch in your face. Do you think they're going to wait? Gary Paveri's warning made Wanda angry. Gary Paveri doesn't own this lake, she said. We can look for the monster if we want to. That's when Miss Frizzle got that funny look in her eye. Hmm. She whistled. Yeah, I can't whistle, sorry. <laughs> and splash! <gasps> the magic school bus hit the water. But it wasn't a bus anymore. It was a bus boat. All aboard! Miss Frizzle called. We scrambled into the bus boat and buckled our seatbelts. Ready to dive, Miss Frizzle, Wanda said. Ready, but unable. Miss Frizzle replied. The sink liner's rusted, and without it, we can't sink. It says, Is it just me, or does this sound like a field trip? I've got that sinking feeling. So what are they going to do if they can't sink? We floated on the water trying to figure out how to get to the bottom of the lake. Then Phoebe came up with another idea. She picked up a banana in one hand. In her other hand, she held this rock, or she held a rock. My banana is lighter than this rock. If I add the rock to the banana, what will a banana rock do? She asked us. We had no idea. She tied the two together and tossed them into the lake. What do you think happens? The banana rock sank. Good one, Phoebe, Keisha cheered. The extra rate weight of the rock is making the banana sink. That's it, Wanda said excitedly. We need extra weight to sink. Yo, monster, it's lunchtime. Oh, we knew we had to make the bus sink, just like the banana rock. We decided that sand would add the extra weight. So we all got to work filling the barrels with sand. Then we strapped the barrels to the bus boat. Phew, it was hard work. This one should do it, Wanda said, as she and Arnold rolled a barrel onto the boat. We had added enough weight. The bus boat started to sink. Ooh, we jumped aboard and went below the deck. Don't let your energy sink. All aboard for the last bus going down. Keep up the good work. Wow, that looks... uh. It's pretty hard, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot of work. Finally, we sank to the bottom of the lake. We could see lots of fish. We could see lots of uh, weeds. But what we didn't see was the jet-powered diving sled whizzing above us. Zoom! Suddenly, the barrels fell off the bus boat. Oh, no. Look. If they don't have the weight, what's going to happen? We're losing our extra weight, Tim shouted. We're rising to the surface, Phoebe added. Miss Frizzle smiled. Right you are. Can you feel the water pushing us up, up, up? It's the water's push that makes uh, that's making us float. It was a little too exciting. All of a sudden, the boat shot upward like a cannon. We were out of control. Isn't, the, isn't floating to the surface exciting? I don't want to float. Wanda does not seem happy. 
The bus boat shot out of the lake and flew into the air. Then, plop, we landed back in the water. Whew, we were safe. Water can be such pushy stuff, Miss Frizzle said happily. But we've still got to find that monster. Oh, sorry. But we've still got to find that monster, Wanda said. We're sunk if we can't sink. Pop out of the water. Phoebe looked around. Now how am I going to feed the monster, she asked. She tossed a slice of bread into the water. The problem was, it floated. She scrunched up another piece and threw it into the water. That one sank. But why? What's the difference between a bread slice and a bread ball? Miss Frizzle asked us. Well, the ball is a lot smaller than the slice, Keisha said. Wanda got excited. So you can take something that floats and crumple it up to make it sink? Now you're thinking sinking, Miss Frizzle said. Class, prepare to crumple. I don't know how I feel about this, guys. Can I be excused from being crumpled? If one of us gets crumpled, we all do. Luckily, our bus boat was equipped for crumpleization. Liz pushed the crumple zone buttons and each corner of the bus boat scrunched up. Soon we were starting to sink. Carlos was confused. If we weigh the same, how does being smaller make us sink? Anybody know? Maybe it's because of the less water we push out of the way, the less the water pushes us back up? Keisha explained. Suddenly, the bus boat really crumpled. We were packed in like sardines in a can. A sinking we will go, a sinking we will go. At my old school, we never went down with the ship. Wow, so look, so see it's on the top and then down it starts to go. Oh my goodness, everyone is so squished. Down, down, down we went. Just before we hit the bottom, Wanda was on her, put on her face mask. Before we could ask what she was doing, Wanda disappeared through the floor hatch. Wanda, we called. The bus boat started to rise in the water. Without Wanda's extra weight, we couldn't stay on the bottom. We needed her back. We're going up. Why didn't we stay sunk? Without Wanda, we're lighter. Oh, no. Wanda didn't hear us calling to her. She was too busy looking for the monster. Suddenly, something grabbed her leg. Wanda was stuck. Ah! Wanda yelled. We had to get back to the bottom of the lake so we could save her. We have to get smaller so we can sink, Ralphie said. Miss Frizzle shook her head. I'm afraid we can't do that, Ralphie. The crumple controls jammed. We were in big trouble. We have to get back down there. I've got that sinking feeling again. You mean that floating feeling. Oh my goodness. What's caught on her leg? Is it the monster? It is. How are they going to get down so they can go save her? I know, Carlos said. He put on his diving gear and dropped through the floor hatch. A second later, we heard a big blope. Blope. Carlos had pulled the corks out of our pontoons. The pontoons were big plastic containers full of air that were attached to the bottom of the bus boat. Without the cork stoppers, uh, water rushed into the pontoons. Whoa! We all shouted. We were sinking again. I get it, Ralphie said. More water, more weight. Ah. Hey! Hang in there, Wanda. It was pretty smart, huh? Meanwhile, 
Wanda was still struggling when suddenly she came face to face with the monster. <gasps> All right, you asked for it, Wanda said. She pulled her arm back. Wham! She gave the monster her best right hand punch. And its nose fell off. Its nose just floated away. What? Why do you think it did that? Wanda gasped. There is no monster. It's all just pretend. Just then, Gary Paveri drove up in her diving sled. And I get to reveal it all on In Your Face, she said excitedly. When Wanda saw Gary, she figured out what had happened. Gary had made it the whole monster story to get people to watch her show. You won't get away with it, Wanda told Gary. Nobody will believe you, Gary said. You're a kid. That made Wanda really angry. We'll see about that, she said. And she swam away as fast as she could. Can you believe that? She told a whole story, a whole lie, just to get people to watch her show. That's not good, is it? It's not nice. It's not kind. Back on the bus boat, the rest of us were confused. What was going on? And where was Wanda? Then Tim spotted her. There she is, he shouted. Sure enough, Wanda was swimming toward us. We all sighed in relief. Whew. What happened to the monster? Carlos asked. The monster's fake, Wanda said in, dis in disgust. The real monster is Gary Paveri. She was trying to get people to watch her show. She is unimpressed, as well she should be. People shouldn't lie to get people to watch your show. They should watch it because they like it, because it's full of good things. We have to get to the surface to stop her, Wanda said. The truth must be told. Everyone looked worried. We didn't know how we'd be able to make it up to the top before Gary went on television. The truth is the pontoons are completely filled with water. We're too heavy for our size. Keisha said. It looks as if we're sunk for good. What can they do to help them be able to rise up, guys, and float? Just when we started to panic, Arnold came up with an idea. If the water in the pontoon weighs us down, he said, we could push that water out with something lighter. Miss Frizzle smiled. And what is a lot lighter than water, she asked us. Air, we all said together. The solution was simple. If we filled the pontoons with air again, the air would push the heavy water out and the bus would be, bus, ugh, excuse me, bus boat would be light enough to float. Into your scuba gear, everyone. Let's fill them up with air. Good thinking, Arnold. See, he was scared, but look at, he came up with the idea to help them. Good thinking. A few minutes later, we put our plan into action. Carlos plugged up the holes on the top of the pontoons so the air wouldn't escape. Then we put air hoses through the holes on the bottom. So there's the hose. Pumpers, start your pumps, Miss Frizzle called. On board, Arnold and Dorothy Ann started pumping. They're pumping. Air bubbles streamed from the air hoses. Soon, air pockets appeared at the top of the pontoons. Uh, the air on the top pushed the water out. Whoosh! The bus boat started to rise. Our plan was working. We've got liftoff. We're getting lighter. We all swam back to the bus boat. Now that we're lighter, the water pushes us, uh, pushes up on us harder than our weight pushes down, Miss Frizzle told us. But we weren't rising for very long. Keisha looked through the glass bottom of the bus boat. The corks are gone and the air is escaping, she exclaimed. Someone had pulled out the corks. Who? And we had a good idea who it was. Gary Paveri. 
What a not nice thing to do. What do we do? What do we do? Air today, gone tomorrow. Wow, Gary Bavari is not a very kind person, huh? Just then, we saw Gary Paveri's fake monster. It was rising toward the surface. Gary was going to lie to her audience and say that she had found the monster. But she was the one who had put it there in the first place. We had to float the boat and fast. What about getting bigger, Phoebe suggested. Remember my bread slice? When it was big, it floated. So if we uncrumple the bus, we'll get bigger and the water will push back more, so we'll float, Dorothy Ann said. Let's do it, shouted Keisha. We all dived into the water. We got to work. Bit by bit, we pushed and pulled the bus boat back to its normal size. And we started to rise. We're turning the sinker into a super floater. Just as we started to pick up speed, Wanda grabbed hold of Tim. Come on, Tim, she said. I have an idea. And bring the monster cam. And off they swam. What are they going to do? A second later, the bus boat and the monster burst out of the lake, right underneath Gary Paveri. My story, Gary wailed as she fell into the lake with a splash. Wanda popped out of the water. Our story, you mean, she said with a grin. She stuck a pin in the monster. What's gonna happen? It shot upward, doing a wriggly dance in as the air whooshed out. It landed on the lake with a splat. And Tim got the whole thing on videotape. Things going to happen next. It had been a pretty exciting Saturday, but it wasn't over yet. We all got to watch Gary apologize to her audience, and we got to be on In Your Face. Oh, she apologized for her mistakes. That's good. How did you get the monster to the surface? Gary wanted to know. The monster was big and light enough to float, Wanda said. All we had to do was cut it loose, and you know the rest. She grinned at the camera. Your very own monster ended up in your face. The truth always floats to the surface. Letters from our readers. Dear Editor, I think Wanda was very brave when she met the monster. She really got to the bottom of the story. Signed, an underwater admirer. Dear Editor, I ride on a school bus almost every day, and it never turns into a bus boat, grows pontoons or crumples. And by the way, it would be impossible for the kids to uncrumple it. That would take superhuman strength. Your friend, I don't believe it. Dear Editor, I admire Phoebe's attempt to feed the monster, but how did she know it liked bananas or peanut butter and jelly? My monster is a very picky eater. Signed, just kidding. These are silly. From the desk of Miss Frizzle. An experiment for parents, teachers, and kids. Maybe you could do this together, guys, and you could tell me all about it. Phoebe discovered that a piece of bread floats. But the same piece of bread sinks if it is scrunched into a ball. Can you think of a way to make a clump of clay float? Try this experiment. Make two balls of clay about the size of a golf ball. So it's like about that big. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but that big. Uh, take one of the balls and flatten it out. Then pinch up the sides, making a little boat. Leave the other ball as it is. Fill a large bowl with water. First, put one ball into the bowl, then the other. Which one floats? Hmm. I'm going to let you do it first, so pause, go do it, and then I'll tell you the answer. Or maybe I'll type it in. That's what I'm going to do. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully.
hopefully by now you've done it. You've paused the video, you've done the experiment, and now I will tell you the answer. The answer. The clay ball sinks because the ball shape can't push enough water out of the way. The boat shape can push enough water out of the way, and the water pushes up hard enough so it floats. Hmm. Can you think of any other things you could do? See if they float or sink? And why? But the end. Yay! I love the Magic School Bus because it teaches us about science and space and all that fun stuff. I love to learn. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye! Mwah! Love you!